Hey everyone, and it is a delight to introduce to you Mr. Jody Espina, who has come all the way from the States here this weekend and is going to be doing this video for us and featuring in particular this new mouthpiece, the DVHR Alto. And we are going to be comparing this mouthpiece with his tried and tested metal counterpart. So that's the DV Metal Alto and the DV New York Alto. Um, so let's just get straight into it, Jody, and talk about the concept of the DV mouthpiece in the first place, how it came about. Okay, I had been making mouthpieces for a few years, and I wanted to make a mouthpiece that had the power for live performances that I needed, and but the fullness and bottom of mouthpieces that I love, her, the hefty Dexter Gordon barrel-chested thing. Oh, yeah. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. I was thinking of it for two years. And uh, I read the Da Vinci Code novel, and it talked about the golden mean proportions found in nature. And when I saw that the Stradivarius violin actually had these proportions, I said, well, maybe I can look at a mouthpiece and start thinking of it. So when I measured one of my mouthpieces, and then I used this formula on it, it led me to this idea of the secondary window. And as soon as I cut that open, it gave me that bottom. Now I wanted to work on the baffle so it was high enough so it gave me that power. Sure. And every design decision has those proportions and something magical happened. And that mouthpiece, which came in about in 2005, right. has changed the fortunes of Jody Jazz. It's all over the world. We can never quite catch up making them. It's quite labor intensive. But that's the idea of the whole DV series, is to give you as much body and fullness and the power and timbre that you want. Mm. And that is my definite feeling that I've enjoyed when I've played these mouthpieces over the years. And it's just really exciting to have this new addition to the range now, the HR version. So I think we're just going to cut straight to it and hear Jody playing all three of these mouthpieces. And then we shall have a conversation and see what we think. Okay, so that sounded great to me. Absolutely Thanks. fantastic. Thanks. I've got one right here for my reference um, because this secondary window is just fascinating. Um, slightly smaller than on the, the metal counterpart, as it were. And I mean, t to me, the sound was everything you just said there. You know, it's got that brightness, it's got that pop in there, but it's got that lovely kind of sultry softness and a kind of airiness in the sound. How would you assess the, the sound and the response of it? Well, you know, Jim, the, the response of the DVs is one thing that jumps out to people. It's so free-blowing. So we still have that free-blowing characteristic. Um, I wanted a warmer mouthpiece, but I wanted this close to the DV power. And uh, so hard rubber warms it up some. And uh, you, hard rubber shape opens your mouth more. So that gives you a bigger chamber, so you get a little warmer there. Um, we made that window shorter and we found out in, in doing the hard rubber, I just wanted certain things from it. It's still a DV, uh, a golden mean proportion. Sure. By shortening it up, actually, the altissimo of this thing is even better than the DV. Right. Yeah. And um, so we put the, the uh, metal brass ring, the heavy ring on there, mm -hmm. and that does have a little more body. We learned that in the custom dark. Sure. So it's got a lot going for it. I think it's a really cool looking, beautiful mouthpiece. Absolutely. And, uh, Especially this inlay right here, yep, right? Yep, Looks that's beautiful. a new feature. And um, it's been our best release, the, the, the most acceptance. People, everybody loves it. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Well, sounded great. Let's move on and talk about the Metal DV next. <laughs> Okay. 
Great. So when I heard you play the DV metal, I could immediately hear extra power in the sound. It just sounded like you kind of turned the volume up to 11 there. Um, so what are we getting with the DV mouthpiece, the metal one? How, how would you describe its characteristics? Right. I would say it is a little bit brighter. Just like you said, when I put it on, I was, I was like, oh yeah, wow, this is more powerful. This, I can, I can go f bigger. Um, so it's exactly where, where I love it to be. So it's that thing where you can play pretty much any contemporary gig and have power but great quality sound. And I play jazz on this too. So you're getting more power. Actually, it's slightly more free-blowing still because of those super, super thin rails. Um, and uh, so if you're more on that contemporary side, and especially if you're used to metal mouthpieces, this is the way to go. But I encourage everybody, go and try, try both if you can. Um, so, but that DV is a special mouthpiece. Sure is. Yeah. Great. So now we're on to the DVNY, and for me this has different playing characteristics. I can really hear that the sound just draws back and sits back really. It's got that real airiness and breadth to it, and I suppose it encourages you to play more in the ballady direction. It makes you want to play like that as a player anyway. I mean, it does have, to me, it has that pop, because any good player can, can get that side of a mouthpiece out of it, as, as you demonstrated right there. Um, but it's not its natural tendency. For me, its natural tendency is to just sit back and produce this beautiful, warm sound. How do you feel about it? Well, I, I love it. And I, I did one record where I was about to play it from the DV, and it, we were doing more bossa novas and stuff. And I said, I'm crazy playing this. I'm going to put the DV New York on. And I put sometimes a little bit harder read on this so I can bring out that lushness and a little of that air. People are really surprised when they play this because they don't think metal can sound beautiful. But it, of course it can. And uh, what they gain from this, they've got that big lush sound. What they gain is the super free blowingness. So just everything comes out so easy and buttery. Mm. Some people ask me why there's no uh, patch on the way we have on the other DV, sure. but we've taken the chamber so deep that there's really not enough room to put a patch in there and that's why that doesn't have that but the chamber is just so nice and deep yeah sure it's absolutely i mean from here i can just see there's just it's just space all the way down the whole thing yeah. and to me that's how it sounds it's just a massively spacious sound really beautiful sounding yeah <laughs> So just to kind of draw the conversation to comparing the three mouthpieces now, because okay. it's, it's the obvious thing to do. We've got the three played side by side and people will naturally want to draw their conclusions and do a comparison. And I was sitting back there listening to you playing all three and I could hear that they've all got their own characteristics, but they obviously belong to the same family as we've been discussing. Um, I mean, the way I feel about it personally, listening to you playing all weekend at the event we've just been attending, uh, the, the, the new DV HR just has this extra warmth to it, that sort of airy quality almost in the sound um, that perhaps you don't get with the, the straight DV metal. Uh, do you feel it has those sort of tendencies um, and uh, perhaps does that make it more suitable for different styles of music in a sense because of that? It, it brought it a little more into the straight ahead jazz world. Um, every Meyer player that's tried it has loved it. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a little more powerful than a Meyer, but it's even got a little more bottom. But uh, it's maybe in that way, it's more in the middle 
and it's so versatile because of that. Um, it's the greatest thing if you can try them both so you have a good, powerful, straight-ahead jazz mouthpiece that can easily play contemporary, sure. and you can play a pretty ballad. You've got the DV. It can do all that too, but it's more powerful, it's more bright, and it's super buttery. And you've got the DV New York, which is about as dark as just about anything. Mm. It's in the, in the range of our custom dark, and there again you have that metal feel versus hard rubber. Mm. So, I think if people get a chance, try them all. Sure. Yeah. And perhaps just a word on the ligature as well. I mean, you've obviously oh, been sure. showcasing your power rings here. And uh, for me, they're so weighted. By the way, if you've not tried one of these things, they're really heavy. And there's that sense as a player that when you add them to the whole setup, that it adds an extra weight to, to the sound. Would you describe it like that yourself? Yes, and it's jumping on that bandwagon that's kind of popular of taking like a big heavy screw right here or when you add mass to things it seems to uh, add body to the sound. So we call it the power ring because a lot of people feel you get a little more power with it and the way it's designed inside, the way it touches the reed adds to the vibration. A lot of people say, whoa, that's a game changer. Um, so. I recommend getting to try that. And we have the ones, you know, that AS1 go, go on almost any alto mouthpiece, any hard rubber alto mouthpiece. Yeah, sure, sure. No, it, it sounds fantastic, the whole setup, but obviously the player himself is, is doing the majority of the work here. So I'm really grateful to you for coming in and showcasing these mouthpieces. I can't wait to get trying this one myself. We've only had it in a few days. I've not got my chops on it yet, but I will do soon. I can't wait to, for that moment. I'm sure we're going to feature it in some future videos and comparisons and what have you. Um, so it only remains for me to thank Jody for, for coming in and doing this for us. And thank uh, you. yeah, thank, thank you. you very much, Jody. I hope you enjoyed this video and we shall see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.